Are we really getting this upset over five to 15 pounds? How you doing, Scott? You gotta be so good that they can't ignore you. Especially the ones that ain't done shit for you. Yeah, you know exactly what I'm meaning. They stab you in the back and then they ask why you're bleeding. I don't trust words. I trust actions. I don't care what you heard. I'm not slacking. My name is Alan Robertson. This is Every Damn Day Fitness. Like, subscribe to the notification over there. So remember to subscribe to my second channel, Alan Robertson. In my opinion, of course, just click the bubble at the end. Thank you very much. So, I'm obviously a big fan of critique on this channel. I think that fitness, health, wellness information that's brought forth on a large platform to many, many, many people should be looked at with a very critical eye. It should be looked at to make sure it's correct, you know, factual. It should be looked at to make sure it's not misleading. It should be looked at to make sure that it's not going to cause people any type of harm. And by harm, I mean, it could be multiple faceted. I, you could take a person who, I don't know, sees a person make a radical claim about, let's just say muscle gain in the first three years of their lifting, who happens, this person also happens to sell beginner programs. So somebody says, hey, this person could get me ridiculous muscle gains in my first three years. I'm going to buy their program. And then when they fall super short, and I mean super short of these ridiculous fucking claims, they are going to then uh, give up on fitness all in general, think we're all fucking hacks, and end up with you know an unhealthy lifestyle. That's some shit. It's, all, it's also even farther, it could actually hurt somebody, right, Vince? How the fuck you doing? Um, but in relative terms, I believe that fitness, health, and wellness information online should be looked at with a very critical eye, very critical. And the importance of this also, though, too, is when the person that's looking at it and being and critiquing it, they should know what the fuck they're talking about, too. Um, and that leads me to Scott Herman. How the fuck you doing, Scott? Um, recently, Scott Herman has been doing his Red Ross imitation to my buddy James's uh, Instavirus series. He's calling it Insta Garbage because he exaggerates the Boston accent to the point where, by the way, nobody from Boston sounds like that motherfucker. Nobody. Nobody. But <clears throat> teach their own. It's good. Um, Scott Herman is very well known to me. He's most well known for being a reality star on The Real World. And to others, he's well known on YouTube. For, he has about 2.3 million uh, uh, million followers. And that's great for Scott. And Scott earns that because he will do and make any video that his subscribers seem to ask him to make, which is great. I don't necessarily go along the lines of like, tell me what you want me to make. Tell me what you want me to make. Uh, I go along the lines of, uh, I'm going to talk to my actual, you know, area of expertise. Um, and when I don't, uh, when I don't know something and I'm going to make a video on it, I actually reach out to somebody that fucking knows what the fuck they're talking about. I often call James from Shredded Sports Science. And again, like I said, uh, Scott, you're obviously very fucking familiar with his work. Um, congratulations. Uh, but rather him, or I'll reach out to uh, Robert Sineski from uh, uh, the Supplement Engineer when I would talk about supplements. You know, experts. Like when I don't know something, I reach out to experts because it's important that when you're critiquing what you think is bullshit information, it's important that you actually get the information correct. Very, very correct. You shouldn't have to, you know, make retraction videos or explaining videos from your critique often. You actually shouldn't. And he's at two right now, Scott is. Um, he had one where he completely misunderstood a tweet from Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, who I just hilariously thinking that, you know, for some reason, Scott Herman is going to somehow say that Dr. Brad Schoenfeld is babying his audience when the man is literally like one of the leading researchers on how muscles grow in the fucking country is hilarious to me. And then he released this clip. Now, we talk about newbie gains, right? And I'm sure you know about this. You may have even talked about this. That first year that you train, if you do it perfectly, you can gain 20 to 25 pounds of muscle. Uh, your second year, you can gain like 15 to 20 pounds of muscle. Third year, eight to 12. You're now, that clip is hysterical for so many fucking reasons. First of all, 57 pounds of muscle gain in the first three years of lifting is fucking fantasy. It's simply fucking fantasy. It really, really is. Only if you're like on the X-Men or you're working out at the gym at Hogwarts should you expect that shit. It's fucking fantasy said by somebody that sells programs which does, in my mind, seem like you are kind of saying to people that you could get them those gains. But we're just going to set that to the side because I'm not going to assume that the intention was that fucking asshole-ish, that V-shred-like. I'm not going to assume that shit. Um, what I can say is what makes it even funnier is that that clip is taken from a video where he is 
basically calling out Greg Duche uh, for debate and saying that Greg Duche's you know, uh, advice on lifting Enhancer Natural is bullshit. Greg Duche has a master's degree in kinesiology, has world record powerlifting numbers, has both competed as a tested natural you know, pro for bodybuilding and an enhanced pro. And here you are calling this man out for debate, talking utter fucking nonsense. Uh, that's fucking ridiculous to me. That, 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 is, that, sh that shows a level of uh, egotism and entitlement that you might want to fucking talk to somebody about, Scott, just to be fucking honest. Uh, for you to just spew that shit out is insane. Now, the funny thing is, is the very beginning clip is when he's talking about like, are we really going to make a deal about that big of a deal about five to 15 pounds? Absolutely. When you're talking about 15 pounds of muscle gain in three years, we're, I really fucking think that that makes it, it's like a disqualifyingly stupid fucking statement. It really is. To put that shit out there, you should pull that fucking video. Instead, he did make a rebuttal video to a video that was done by Steve Shaw, um, where he is then going to try to pass the buck onto Lyle McDonald. What's going on, nation? I'm Scott from MuscularStrength.com, and today I want to talk to you about your genetic muscle building potential as a natural athlete. I had actually made a comment about this in my recent video response to Greg Doucette on training as a natural athlete versus enhanced, and while we agreed on pretty much everything in the video, how much muscle you can gain when you first start your fitness journey was something Greg disagreed with me on. Actually, if you look at Greg Doucette's response video to this, which I'm going to link above, he laughed at you on multiple occasions, most of which when you asked him for debate, he fucking laughed at you. But he also pointed out how your fucking muscle growth numbers were complete and utter fucking bullshit. So jumping in, guys, I made a video four years ago called Bulking, You Are Doing It Wrong. And in that video, I referenced an article from Lyle McDonald where he talks about your genetic muscle building potential, and he gives his opinion based on his 20 years experience working with athletes, bodybuilders, and powerlifters, and he also compares his findings to a similar model by Alan Aragon, and I'll link to that article as well as any other articles I mentioned in this video in my pinned comment so you guys can check them out. But basically, it came down to this. Lyle McDonald's chat explains that in your first year of proper training, you can expect to gain 20 to 25 pounds of muscle, or two pounds per month. In year two, around 10 to 12 pounds, or one pound per month. And in year three, five to six pounds, or half a pound per month. And then year four, and every year after that, maybe two to three pounds, and then it kind of tapers off. So where the fuck did your numbers come from? Because again, you said this. That first year that you train, if you do it perfectly, you can gain 20 to 25 pounds of muscle. Uh, your second year, you can gain like 15 to 20 pounds of muscle. Third year, eight to 12. So I have respect for Lyle McDonald on many, many levels. However, I'm going to say that Scott is basically saying here that he based his numbers off a of 20% inflation or more of the anecdotal opinion of somebody from 2009. In a video where he is calling for debate with Greg Doucette. That's fucking hilarious. That's fucking ridiculous, dude. And to make a second video trying to explain it away and kind of put it on Lyle. No, motherfucker, you're the one that said that. So you're talking about Lyle's thing. Let's talk about your numbers because you said 57 pounds. Lyle is talking 43. It should go without saying that these numbers are for males and for females, the values are about half per year. But if taken out of context, I can 100% see why this may have confused some of you. Sometimes we get tunnel vision and just assume that the people we're talking to know exactly where we're coming from when we make statements like this, which is admittingly my own fault. Yeah, right now we're getting reality star Scott. We're getting real world Scott. He's trying to be charming as fuck. We're not getting Red Ross Scott with all the fucking veins. He's trying to be charming as fuck. You know why? Because he knows he's fucking busted. He knows he has to fucking explain away some serious fucking bullshit. So what he's doing is spreading the fucking blame around. Right now he's spreading the blame around to Lyle McDonald and Alan Aragon, the audience a little bit for not assuming what the fuck he was talking about, and himself a little bit too for the presentation. My bad, guys. Here's the fucking reality, dude. Your numbers aren't even in the scientific margin of error to fucking Lyle McDonald's. They're not even fucking close. He claimed 43 pounds in the first three years. You claimed 50 fucking seven. To an audience... Your audience, let's be real, is most that, that are going to buy your shit is mostly fucking newbies. Let's be fucking real. And in fucking reality, those newbies now see you claim that you can add 57 pounds of muscle mass to them in the first fucking three years, dude. That's fucking bullshit to me. That deserves to be on Insta garbage, motherfucker. It really fucking does. You know, 
anybody can critique people. I think it should be. Just like I said, I think that information, especially when it comes to fitness, health, and uh, wellness, should be looked at with a critical eye. And when it's bullshit, it should be called out as much as fucking possible because that way we can have the healthiest society possible. That way people don't think of the fitness industry as just some fucking people that will talk bullshit fucking numbers. Just like this is. It would have been so fucking easy for you to be like, look, I was talking off the top of my head and I you know, radically overstated Lyle's numbers. My fucking bad. But instead, you make a 15 fucking minute video trying to explain shit away. Here's a fucking newsflash for you, Scott. If you have to keep making videos explaining your fucking critiques, you fucking suck at it. Just to be fucking real. You fucking suck at it. If you have to make a fucking video talking about why you 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 appreciate Dr. Brad Schoenfeld and you fucking tell him which represented him, which by the way, motherfucker, to actually state that his work would have obese people sitting down doing fucking curls, what a fucking leap. That's like the Grand Canyon of a fucking leap, asshole. But that's a whole fucking other thing somebody else might talk about to you sometime in the future. I don't fucking know. But you can critique whatever you want, but if you have to fucking keep making videos explaining your fucking critique... Maybe you'd fucking suck at it. Maybe you shouldn't fucking do it. Maybe you should stick to your workout videos. Now, I know they're not getting the views that they fucking used to get, and that's why you're reaching out to all sorts of fucking people to do fucking collabs, but this information, how you presented it, is the reason why I laughed at your fucking email when you asked me to collab, bitch. That's why. It's because I saw you making the Insta garbage thing, which obviously is just a fucking, you know, you should fucking thank James, at least for the fucking idea of the Insta garbage thing, because you literally just took the Insta virus put your fucking stupid ass word on it and then fucking went with it. And that's good because again, more people critiquing bad information, all the fucking better. You just need to make sure you fucking do it right and get your fucking shit straight while you're fucking doing it, asshole. That's that's all that's what needs to fucking happen. Don't try to explain your shit away. If you can't fucking get shit right the first fucking time, shut the fuck up. Maybe call somebody to find out what the fuck you're doing. Maybe have some fucking notes. Don't think you're so fucking awesome at fitness that you can just talk ridiculous bullshit and then not get fucking called out. Because those times are long fucking gone. And that's just my two cents. My name's Alan Roberts. You can hit me up on Instagram at Alan Roberts EDF. You can hit me up on Twitter at Everyday Fitness. I'm also on Facebook at Everyday Fitness. And I'm on the internet at EverydayFitness.net. God damn.